Um, so the software that I want to look at tonight for Windows XP is called Cobian Backup, and this is available free of charge through Cobian's site. And we're actually going to just bring this right up into Windows XP. And this, uh, in, this, in the course of the series, uh, it's a four-part series, we're going to be looking at Windows XP, Windows Vista, Linux, and Mac OS. So we're going to be taking a look at different backup options for all four of those uh, operating systems. And a lot of this uh, information obviously transcends the operating system that we're using. Tonight we're looking at Windows XP, but a lot of what we do here is going to transcend to Windows Vista, and as well as that, some of the techniques and, and just the theory behind it is going to uh, also be, you know, it's going to work with uh, any operating system, regardless of whether we feature it or not. Uh, so, Cobian site is at eduk, short for education, dot u-m-e dot s-e, and uh, slash a bunch of stuff. You can find this in Google, or you can visit our website, category5.tv, and we'll link to this. Uh, and if you're interested in using open source software, you can use Cobian Backup version 8 with version 9. Uh, he unfortunately had to close the source. So we're going to go with backup number 8, which is open source. And that's going to uh, give us this free software that, uh, that we can get right off the website. This is just a piece of software that I really like because it allows us to do backups with, uh, <coughs> with different systems. But at the same time, uh, we can do the FTP backups and things like that. Are you okay over there, Carrie? Oh, I just need a break for a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> Poor Carrie. Choose your language. <laughs> this is the uh, license agreement. There we go. Now this screen here is asking us how we would like to install Cobium Backup. Would we like it to be a service? Uh, would we like to run it as an application? Uh, so basically when you run a uh, backup software as a service, it's going to run on your system regardless of who's logged into your computer, regardless of if somebody's logged into your computer. So running it as a service is going to basically have it running in the background and you don't have to intervene. You don't have to uh, make sure that you're logged into the computer, for example, like some old software that didn't run as services. So very nice there. Um, and then just, uh, so I'm going to run this as a service, and you can go through if you have advanced user uh, settings and things like that for permissions on a network, you may need to use a different uh, user account, but essentially you should be able to uh, just run it like this. There we go. So that's just going to go through the installation. If you have any questions for me, just visit our website, category5.tv. We've got the chat room open here. And, uh, oh, poor Carrie. Are you okay? Here she comes. I'm alive. Okay. I'll turn my mic back on. Sorry. <laughs> it's bound to happen, you know, after so many episodes. Bad time for a cough spell, yeah. <laughs> this, yeah, this is live television. No editing. No editing. There you have it. <laughs> yeah. Must have been the mint tea, I don't know. Is that what it was? <laughs> Did you, like, swallow the, the grit at the bottom? Oh, no. I don't know. Oh. That's, sorry about that. <laughs> I missed your, right, uh, your talk, though. Yeah, it's I'm okay. Fine, it was thanks. really boring. Was it? It was geeky, like Aww. beyond belief. Aww. People are like, "What is he talking about?" He was just Aww. shouting out ones and zeros. Oh. Um, so, Cobian Backup Eight is now installed, nice and quick. We're gonna hit done, and you see that I just got this off of their website. It's free, and uh, it's thrown this little icon down there. So I'm going to bring up Cobian Backup by double-clicking on the little moon at the bottom. That is the icon that you're going to get if you've installed version 8, um, which is the open source edition. Version 9 is going to be a little mushroom. So just FYI, that's what you'll see down there. So first step is to right-click on this left area here, okay? And basically the interface is pretty easy to, to figure out. But right-click on the area here, go New Task, and we're going to go through setting up our backup. So we're going to call this my backup, and then you want to include your subdirectories, yes, etc., etc. Do you want to create separated backups using timestamps? This is like I was saying about using, um, like keeping, you know, being able to go back in time when it comes to your backup. So if you'd like to be able to do that, make sure that you use timestamps there. So let's do that. Uh, you, this stuff we can leave the same, and then we choose the backup type. We don't want to go with full, most likely, because what's going to happen then is no matter whether you've changed files on your computer or not, it's always going to back up everything. 
So what that means is if you've got the, all those pictures in your My Pictures folder and then you run your backup, it's going to back up every picture every single time you run that backup. So it's going to be this huge backup. It's going to be very time consuming. You don't want to do that. So uh, the next one that we can choose is called Incremental. Incremental is the one that we most commonly will use uh, because that allows us to back up only the files that have changed since the last backup. So we can use that. Next is differential, which is going to back up only the files that are changed since the last full backup. And then dummy, we're not going to use. So then we can select how many uh, backup copies we want to keep. So this is going back in time. How many times do we want to be able to go back? So full copies to keep, we can set it to, say, two. We can set it to four. Um, and you can even just set it to one. But let's go with two. Make a full backup every let's say six backups. So what happens there is we've got a, a full copy of our files every six backups and it's going to keep that many copies. You can Honestly, you can play with some of these settings, give it a go and, and just make sure you're happy with the results. Go into files and we're going to go add directory because we want to add recursive directories and we're going to go into your C drive. We're going to go into documents and settings which is where all your user data is and you're going to see your user account. So I would have like Robbie Carrie would have Carrie in this instance because I, I've got it set up the way I do. I've just got administrator. I'm going to back up favorites, for example. So I'm going to highlight favorites and hit OK. Then that adds that to my backup. I'm going to go through, and you can back up as many things or as few things as you want. But I'm going to show you some of the stuff that you might not know about, such as if you've got Mozilla Firefox installed. I think it's under application data, Mozilla Firefox. Uh, pretty sure, well, you know what we're going to do in that instance? Let's go add files because we just want those bookmarks. We don't want to lo lose the bookmarks that uh, we've got bookmarked in Firefox. Documents and settings, administrator or whatever your username is, application data, Mozilla, Firefox, profiles, whatever that is, and then bookmarks.html. That's your actual bookmarks in Firefox. So we want to just book, book, uh, back up that one file. We don't need to... Uh, we don't need to save everything from that folder. We just need that, the bookmarks. Uh, similarly, okay, so we're going to add directories here. Let's get stuff like our Outlook Express. Uh, my Documents, very important. That contains your My Music and your My Pictures. If you keep anything on your computer in an odd place, make sure you surf for that as well. If you've got something in the root folder of your C drive, for example, very important that you back those up as well. But essentially, I'm showing you some of the stuff uh, that you'll definitely want to back up. Uh, under Local Settings, this is again under Documents and Settings and then your user account. Local Settings, Application Data, you're going to see one called Microsoft and you've got Microsoft Outlook if you're using Microsoft Outlook. Uh, so that's like your PST files for uh, Microsoft Outlook email and your contacts and things like that. So we're going to back that up. And then for Outlook Express on the other hand, we're going to find that under, I think it's Local Settings, Application Data, Identities and then you'll see this big long thing. Click on that, Microsoft Outlook Express. All right. And then we're going to get all this back up. So let's say that that's everything that we need. Then we're going to choose a destination. So we can set this as a manual destination. We can set this as a directory, which would be like an external drive, or like I was saying there, an FTP site. And that's going to allow you to uh, set that all up. Okay. So next, we need to set up the schedule. In our schedule, we're going to tell it whether we want to go, you know, how incrementally we want to run this backup. So let's say we want to do this on a weekly basis. Let's choose every Thursday at 6.42 p.m., whatever. And that's going to run automatically at that time to the destination that we want. We can compress. I'm going to let you go through the rest of the settings here. You can set it to uh, add the files to a zip file and set up all that kind of stuff. But not necessary if you're not looking to encrypt things because it's just your own data backup and things like that. It's just going to slow down the backups. So that essentially, uh, in a nutshell, is Cobium Backup. And as you can see, with features like being able to specify the destination, uh, you're going to be able to set up uh, your schedule for the backup itself. As long as you've got the destination accessible, so if it's an external drive, you've got to have that plugged in at the time that the backup is scheduled, uh, and then you'll be able to uh, proceed with that. In a case where, let's say you want to run this manually, you can leave out the schedule altogether, and from then on, when you see this little icon down here, anytime you want to run a, a backup manually, you can just right-click and go run all tasks now. So that's how we would then perform a manual backup, which may be handy for someone like my wife who just backs up her files occasionally onto uh, her flash drive. 
So, Carrie, you're back with us. Yes, that Welcome. was very good, Robbie. Good job. Did that make any sense? Mm, yeah. Aww. Yes. 